Call to order the meeting of Monday, May 9th. If the clerk would please take the roll. Councilmember Amos. Present. Councilmember Archibald. Councilmember Ashford. Present. Councilmember Harris. Here. Councilmember Lewandowski. Here. Councilmember Ruiz. Here. Mayor Rapp. Here. You have before you the minutes from the regular meeting of April 25th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So moved. Thank you, Councilmember Ashford. Is there a second? Support. Councilmember Ruiz, are there any additions, deletions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as they were submitted. We have one presentation tonight, if the clerk would please read it. Proclamation observing the week of May 15th through the 21st as Police Week and May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and this will be presented to Chief Michael Reeves. read this proclamation. Whereas the Congress and President John F. Kennedy signed Public Law 87-726 in 1962, designating May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week beginning on Sunday in which May 15th falls is National Police Week. And whereas the law was amended by the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994, Public Law 103-322, Signed by President William Jefferson Clinton, directing that the flag of the United States be displayed at half-staff on all government buildings on May 15th each year. And whereas the members of the Port Huron Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the city of Port Huron residents by unceasingly providing a vital public service. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency and that members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the Port Huron Police Department will honor Detective Sergeant Roy Chamblow, who was killed in the line of duty on October 10, 1930, and all officers who have sacrificed their lives in the line of duty by wearing black mourning bands for a 48-hour period beginning Sunday, May 15, 2016. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Pauline M. Rep, call upon the citizens of Port Huron and upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 15th through the 21st, 2016, as Police Week, with appropriate ceremonies and observances in which all our citizens may join in commemorating law enforcement officers past and present who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in so doing have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. And I further call upon the citizens of the City of Port Huron to observe Sunday, May 15, 2016 as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty and let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. I'd like to present this to you and if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for recognizing the work of police officers not only in the city of Port Huron but uh, throughout the state of Michigan and the rest of the country. I would invite you and uh, the interested guests to attend our uh, annual Police, Fire, and Citizens Awards Ceremony, which is next Tuesday, the 17th. It starts at 6 p.m. We'll also have a swearing in of a new officer on that same night. It is a night that you can come and hear about some of those heroic deeds that uh, sometimes you may read in the newspaper and you want to hear the other half of the story. It's a very interesting and compelling night. Again, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. We have several public hearings. If the clerk would please read the first one. Number one is to hear comments on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2016-17. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council tonight on public hearing number one relative to the proposed budget? Seeing no one, I'll declare public hearing number one closed and we'll move on to number two. To hear comments on the proposed capital improvement program for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2016. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council this evening on public hearing number two on the capital improvement program? Seeing no one, I'll declare public hearing number two closed. Number three, please. To hear comments on the tentative budget for the Port Huron Downtown Development Authority for fiscal year 2016. 
Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council on public hearing number three relative to the DDA budget? Seeing no one, I'll declare public hearing number three closed. We will move on to public comment. This is the time when anyone in the audience wishes to address the council on any items either on the agenda or that are relevant to the city. Uh, you can come forward, give us your name, and you have four minutes. Scott Richard Warden, 412 Grand River, Port Huron. Uh, just uh, wanted to make, make a couple comments on, I think it's resolution number three. This is for uh, the Stevens industry, uh, their uh, purchase and potential development of the uh, waterfront view uh, right here at the old YMCA site. I'm in strong support. I mentioned it last wasn't last meeting, it was a meeting before. I think that uh, something with that, uh, a five to seven story potential view, uh, something that would actually bring uh, increased tax dollars by having it as a condo. You're gonna be drawing some people to our community. They're gonna be able to enjoy the waterfront view and also probably some would have, I haven't seen any of the illustrations or diagrams of potential layout, but um, I do think that is a a great uh, use of that land and again nothing against the previous uh, proposal uh, that was out there that the time elapsed uh, or lapsed on uh, the options there but to have some some uh, some guys that have some ties to the community long standing in the community and actually having that uh, that viewpoint I mean, strong strong support of something like that for that piece of property even though it's not waterfront it definitely has waterfront view and again, I, uh, once we see the diagrams or see what they can do with that thing, there might even be a potential for a phase two. I don't know the, the layout, but strong support. I just wanted to make sure I gave my public comment to you guys to give fair consideration on that, and hopefully uh, you approve that. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, City Council members, uh, public. Uh, Dick Cummings, uh, Volcom, Michigan, St. Clair County, FLCO. <clears throat> I just want to remind the audience that, uh, and the listeners out there that uh, next Saturday, the 14th, is the Letter Carrier's annual food drive. So if everybody would put their uh, non-perishable food out by their mailbox early Saturday morning, the uh, United Way and the postal workers and the labor unions will pick it up and it'll be distributed to the communities in which they live. If it's Yale, Cape Ack, or Avenard or whatever, where that food is collected, it'll, be, it'll go there. <clears throat> and then the ex excess goes to uh, the soup kitchen. This is a 24th annual food drive sponsored by the letter carriers in the United Way and other organizations across the country. Uh, last year, in St. Clair County here, we raised 80,000 uh, pounds. Annually, for many years we've been doing, we've raised over 7 million pounds. Today, believe it or not, you know, we, we have a pretty good economy going right now, but there's still one out of five people going to bed hungry at night. So the need is there, and uh, we will do our best to collect what you put out there, and let's have another successful drive. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the council this evening? Thank you. Seeing no one else, I will declare public comment closed. We will move on to consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford. Is there a second? Support. Councilmember Amos. We'll take the vote. Councilmember Amos? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Lewandowski? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. The items on the consent agenda, we received and filed the quarterly financial report for the nine-month period ending March 31st, 2016. 
uh, recommended the application of Blue Moose Brewing Company, LLC, doing business as Thumb Coast Brewing Company for a new microbrew license, small winemaker license, and small distiller license to be located at 330 Quay Street, that it be approved by the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Approve the purchase of eight tax foreclosed properties from St. Clair County Treasurer to sell to the Port Huron Neighborhood Housing Corporation to either be demolished through the blight elimination program or rehabilitated with home funds. Confirmed and approved single lot special assessments for fines, assessments, and or cost of removing blight, blighting factors, and or causes of blight, as well as the abatement of nuisances. And confirmed and approved single lot special assessments for special trash pickup in the right of way. Which takes us to from the city manager number one. Is accepting the sole source quote from B&B Roadway in the amount of $18,680 for a gate arm box for the 10th Street Bridge. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Lewandowski, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Ruiz, is there a discussion? Madam Mayor, um, yes. this is a replacement of a gate that was damaged in a crash. Um, a single source provider is because we can only find one firm that will actually complete the work, and we do expect the uh, insurance money to cover this, correct? Yes. So we're essentially fiduciating the replacement. Replacement of that. Okay. We will eventually get insurance uh, funds from the accident. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilmember Ashford. And what is the timetable on this? Can you address the timetable? Uh, Madam Mayor, Madam, yeah. Councilman, I <clears throat> anticipate that once we've gotten the approval for this, uh, we will order uh, this item, which we have uh, gotten a quote for, and we anticipate receipt within uh, a month to six weeks and installation uh, thereafter. Right now, we've, we've had to uh, do a field repair on the existing gate arm box, but it's not going to last very long. It leaks and it's, it's getting rusty and it's not going to work. So that's why we have to replace it. Okay, that's you just got a temporary fix. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Mayor. Yes, well, thank you. Stay up there for the next couple. Yeah, because we got a few more. <laughs> stay standing. <laughs> Uh, is there any other discussion on item one? We'll take the vote. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Lewandowski? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Councilmember Amos? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move to item two. Is accepting the unit price bid from Detroit Salt Company in the amount of $54.24 per ton for early and backup delivery of salt. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Ruiz. Uh, I guess I will ask the question is this, as far as the price, is this competitive with last year's price? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Uh, this year's price is $54.24 per ton, both for the early and the backup delivery. Last year we paid $55.05 per ton. And the year before that we paid a little bit less, but it's uh, competitive. In fact, it's even less than we paid last year. Very good. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilmember Ashford. Since we didn't have all that ice last year, I mean, did we use as much uh, last year? No, ma'am. Uh, this last year we only used 4,500 tons. Uh, typical year we would use 6,500 to 8,000 tons. So, I mean, we had that much more so we didn't have to buy that much yes, this time. Yes, ma'am. We would normally buy um, more than 4,500 tons, but we have enough in stock and we're just uh, anticipating that we're not going to need to buy our normal six to eight thousand uh, tons. Thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Unless we have really bad weather, huh? <laughs> 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 Which we hope not. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Mayor. Rep. Yes, Councilmember Lewandowski. I know in years past they've done two prices: one for the early delivery and one for the later delivery. It looks like they're both the same this year. Is that correct? Yes. Most of the bidders gave us, well, every bidder gave us two numbers. In this particular case, we've gotten uh, the same number for the early and the late delivery from the low bidder, and, uh, you know, it, it worked out. It, it's a competitive year for SALT. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I, yes. would, I would point out that in the backup SALT delivery, we are obligated to take, I believe, 75% of the backup SALT. So we have $2,500 reserved in backup, and we are required to take 75% of that. Of that backup. Yeah. But we have the storage capacity for that. Thank you. 
Is there anything else? We'll take the vote. <clears throat> Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Lewandowski? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Amos? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three, please. Is accepting the unit price bid from Michigan Pipe Inspection Incorporated in the amount of $161,412.88 for pre design and emergency sewer cleaning and video inspection services for a three year period. Do we have a motion? So move. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Council Member Ruiz, is there a discussion? Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member Harris. Just, just a comment. Uh, this company here is a local company. Uh, its business address is over on uh, Ronald Street. Uh, the gentleman lives in the city of Port Yarn. Uh, anybody that's ever had any experience with them and, and things like that, his, his equipment is state of the art. It's always up to date. And his prices, from what I've seen other people do and stuff, is, is very, very competitive. So I think this is a, a win for us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Discussion? Yes, Mayor Rep. Council Could you members? expound a little bit more on this? Yes, Mayor. What would you care to know? Um, I, can, I, I care to know the highlights behind it. Well, the, what we reason. do is we have Michigan Pipe Inspection act as a standby uh, service for emergency sewer cleaning in the event that we have uh, a need. All, our VAC truck will do most of the regularly scheduled sewer cleaning, for example, but if we have them busy and there's a break somewhere that ne they need to respond, they have the capability to do that. Uh, for the most part, they are on call to do video inspection services for projects in which we need to do a video of an existing pipe that they have the equipment to put a mandrel and a TV camera inside a, a pipe and take a video that we need for pre-construction and post-construction uh, documentation. That's the purpose of, of the Michigan Pipe Inspections work. Uh, they have equipment that we do not have uh, in the city. Okay, so it's the technology yes, significance. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mayor Rupp. You're welcome. Anybody else? Mayor. Council Member Lewandowski. This price seems to be down quite a bit from years past. I think at one time we got up towards a quarter million of dollars. Really? So I think that's you know mm -hmm. something to say with you know the work that's been done and the quality that's been done on some of the work. Too. Yeah, we got lucky. <laughs> we like that. Anything else? <clears throat> we'll take the vote. Council Member Lewandowski. Yes. Council Member Ruiz. Yes. Council Member Amos. Yes. Council Member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Harris. Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. If there's no objections, we possibly could take four and five together. They're for the same company, just a little different marking services. Go ahead. Accepting the unit price bid from Michigan pavement markings in the estimated amount of $17,188 for pavement marking services for crosswalks, arrows, and onlys. Number five is accepting the unit price bid from Michigan Pavement Markings in the estimated amount of $7,887.78 for pavement striping services. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Lewandowski, is there a second? Support. Council Member Amos, is there discussion? Madam Mayor, if I could. Yes. Um, we break these up into two different contracts because it requires two different very distinct sets of equipment to complete this work and the, the, the pavement markings for the arrows and, the, and the, the, the signs require stencils and a lot of manpower, and whereas the other one requires big trucks. And we, we do this hopeful in the fact that we can get, attract local bidders or smaller bidders who maybe not have the big trucks or the big contract but can do the arrows and turn signs. Uh, also noteworthy, we used to do this in-house several years ago. I asked why we currently do not do in-house, and it is because we used to have two additional employees plus a seasonal worker we used to spend all summer doing this, and since we reduced our workforce, we contract this out, and they now get it done in a matter of a couple days throughout the city. So that is why we do not do anything else. Just some history there for you. Any other discussion? Yeah, Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member. I don't want to beat old horse to death, but I, this, this subject comes up every year, and as mild as last winter was, I wonder if anybody's actually evaluated how important it is to redo these crossings and stuff. I know we saved. Uh, a lot of money last winter with their expenses and stuff and, and I just also wonder that the less deterioration we had in our winter budget and stuff it might be less deterioration with these uh, crosswalk signs and stuff. Well sir for the uh, crosswalks and the arrows we do approximately 10 to 15 percent of the crosswalks throughout the city in any one year and so we don't 
complete the entire city in one year. So the damage or the, the wear is not just a, one winter's worth. For the striping, we do the entire city because of the winter, and that's all done at once. So that's the difference between, between these two. The crosswalks, we're only doing a portion. Uh, for the stripes, we're doing, we only have to do the major streets. The local streets don't need striping, and the trunk line streets are a DOT requirement, and they do the striping. Any other questions or discussion? We'll take the vote. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Amos? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Harris? No. Council Member Lewandowski? Yes. Mayor Rupp? Yes. We'll move on to resolutions. Number one, please. Is authorizing 14 payments. Is there a motion? So move. Thank you, Council Member Ashford. Is there a second? Second. Council Member Ruiz? Is there discussion? Mayor Rupp? Yes, Council Member Harris. I had a question here on, on payment number 1-3. It cites the uh, River Street project and it says the uh, covered territory is from Glenwood to Stone Street. And I was just trying to fathom how Glenwood would connect to Stone Street. Where should it have been and River Street? The 7,000? Yeah. Stone ends in the Glenwood. Yes. Right at the college. It when you go, yeah. Did you hear him? Yeah. Stone, yeah, stone the intersects with... It's, uh, it's a project then, right? Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a project. River Street is the actual project, and it's saying River Street from Glenwood to Stone, and they're both, yeah. Yes, yeah, a continuum that flows into that. that Did you have something, Mr. Freed? Nope. A, no. Don't ask him anything. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they, they wouldn't be... Uh, yeah. They don't, they intersect like this, so they can't both, yeah. <laughs> Lenny, you want to take that up? No. No, he, he, not, he okay. got it. I think he understands okay. right. now. now. The answer was good enough for me. But. Right. Okay. Now you're right. a dead horse. You can't beat it no other way. We just, any other questions it. about the... Yeah. Any other questions? Just, just one other comment okay. on, on item number five on, on the uh, payments was the, uh, the ten, almost the $10,000 for... Uh, uh, the B B L B yeah the uh, engineering. engineering company yeah. for measuring the depth of uh, Black River and, and thank God for Mother Nature we don't have to do any dredging at all but uh, I just wondered with the state of the art equipment we I thought we were going to save some money but uh, we still ended up spend, spending ten thousand dollars so but uh, Mother Nature takes care of itself sometimes sometimes I, I, will, I will add to that that we have historically high water levels right now and uh, Mother Nature is cyclical so eventually that water will recede and <laughs> no. we will dredge again. Yes it will. Any other discussion? We'll take the vote. Council Member Amos? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Lewandowski? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes, we'll move on to resolution two. Is approving the intergovernmental agreement with the McMoran Civic Center Authority to place the day to day management of McMoran Civic Center under the city's Parks and Recreation Department. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Lewandowski, I think I heard Councilmember Ruiz too, so I'll use him as the seconder. And uh, Mr. Freed and staff have a presentation for us on this before we have discussion. Madam Mayor and Council, I'll, I'll briefly go over the intergovernmental agreement you have before you. And also, I will turn over to Nancy Windsor, who will discuss about uh, some of the operational aspects of it as well. I have Ed Brennan here to discuss some of the finances. And we also have the issue of the current SMG employees, who used to be formerly city employees. Um, and we can discuss the transition possibly back to city employees. I have Julie here to discuss that as well, if you have any questions. So I kind of have my my team here uh, to talk about anything you need to have questions answered for. So before you have an intergovernmental agreement that is, is similar to the SMG contract and that it turns the day-to-day -day operations over to our Parks and Recreation Department. Um, because the uh, McMoran Authority is considered an actual governing body, we can't just walk in there and take it over or, or, or somehow impose our will on it. We need to do a, an agreement with them on how it will operate. And so our legal counsel drafted the intergovernmental agreement that essentially it becomes an operational kind of like a component unit of the city. Why we find this to be beneficial 
is because this will allow us to make a cross-functional team effort into making operations at McMoran much more sustainable and cost efficient. Meaning, for example, uh, before the Prowler's final game, there was about 10 lights out above the arena. And they don't have a bucket truck or people who can fix those lights. They typically contract that out. We sent over our forestry truck with a worker and changed out all those light bulbs. We can do that type of things together in-house. Also in their component unit, the accounts payable, receivable, the financing of, uh, of how the financial aspect of McMoran operates, we have those processes and procedures in-house already. And so we can begin to operate them much more efficiently. When they have payroll, they can go through us. When they have bills, they can be dumped into our, our bill pay cycle. Uh, so the day-to-day -day operations will essentially serve, in effect, as a component unit. Uh, of city operations. We believe there's money to be saved there by doing, right now, we pay $12,000 a year because Plant Moran does an individual audit of McMorrin. We can save some money by being it simply a component unit and it will be included in our audit. So that is what the intergovernmental agreement does. Uh, Nancy Windsor will still res uh, be re uh, responsible to the city manager. Um, however, they will meet with the McMorrin Authority once a month or once or twice a month to brief them financials on events and more importantly um, as the capital and facility maintenance issues come up. And then I'll turn it over to Nancy here to talk about some of her plans for the operation. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say my staff and myself are very excited if this agreement goes through tonight about the possibilities at McMorn. Um, I know it's, like I said at the McMoran meeting the other day, I know it's a little scary. People are probably a little apprehensive. They don't know how it's all going to work. And there will be growing pains, obviously, because, you know, it's something new. But I really do believe that with the community partners we have, and I just really believe in the people at McMoran that work there now and the, and the assets they have, I really do believe we're going to bring more recreational opportunities to Port Huron. I really do, and I believe we can help make it a bigger asset to downtown as well. So um, with that, I'd like to kind of start out by talking about the proposed new organizational chart. Um, so the Parks and Recreation Director would still be me. <laughs> You're stuck with me. Um, we will be uh, hiring a new recreation supervisor, and that person will oversee the Palmer Park um, operation. Our Park supervisor will still stay the same as now, and he will be in charge of the parks and forestry and all the things that he does now. Cemetery supervisor will still be who it is now, and they will be in charge of cemetery operations as now. And um, the McMoran manager at this particular point will be me. Um, at some point, we may look at getting, and I'll be the interim general manager, and then at some point, what I really like to do is it's hard to make like operational decisions when you're not there yet. So it's important. My office, if, if this goes, happens, will move to McMorn. So you can, I think it's important to kind of be there, see what's going on, get a better idea of the operations there. So that would be what the new organizational Real chart would look Nancy. like. Okay, I'm sure. what, what I think is significant about this is um, when we first, Nancy and I first became discussing this in about December or November or December, um, when we thought a change of direction was going to be needed at McMorrin. And when we first discussed it, I had serious concerns about overtaxing Nancy, to be quite frank. I thought it was, you know, I don't want to overburden someone, give them too much to handle, and it would somehow have an adverse effect on our current quality of our parks and recreation program. And that was a concern of mine. And so the recreation supervisor, I think, is, is, is critical in this proposition and the fact that we used to have that position um, and that position was done away with throughout the last, what, five or ten years? Yeah, probably about five or six years. Five or six years ago that position was done away with. But this is key in the fact that we have qualified, capable people who can help take a lot of the day-to-day -day recreational activities off of Nancy's plate so that she has more time to spend at McMoran operations during the transition and until we get a manager in place. But I, I, I wanted to stress the recreation supervisor and how that will give us the, the manpower we need to not overtax our staff and make sure, you know, just because we can take something over, we want to make sure we can take something over and, and run it right. And so that is a key component of this entire proposition is creating that position, the recreation super back in, supervisor back in, and the McMoran manager, and then eventually overseeing all those four positions by, by Nancy. So the, for that concern, I wanted to mention that. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, or the, the next. Some, some, of, some of the advantages to the agreement 
Um, is obviously we've had a lot of success with different events in town and I understand that some of this is different I get that but the basis is like James said well, we're going to use the recreation staff at Palmer Park as well I got a great staff of programmers that will be helping to program at Palmer Park and at McMoran and I think McMoran has a lot of great assets in their staff and I think that there's ways to cross them over I mean a small example is they have a food and beverage person at McMoran who does a phenomenal job we're opening up a concession stand at Lakeside and we have the concession stand at Rockin' the Rivers and so I do see a lot of crossover in that because that's a tail you know that's a specialty too knowing to do all that stuff so we'll be looking at ways that we can cross the staff over and create more recreational opportunities at both locations I have the program guide there that's in front of you <clears throat> we'll, we do those quarterly We'll be including all the McMoran activities as well in there. So that's, again, cross-promotion, cross-marketing, um, another asset. Um, also, just, I believe, our partners in the community. I mean, this is going to be a community effort. This is not just our team doing it. I mean, and I've had a lot of people come to us just saying that they're willing to help. I mean, there's one thing that is very evident. People love McMoran in this town, and I've had a lot of people already step up and say, you know, and, and that's really important. And anybody that knows me, we, we work hard to work with. You got to work together, otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, also, just grants, too. Um, just trying to figure out any grants that work at McMoran, you know, finding the fit. Um, we already kind of started that. I worked with Rob. We, we got a grant for ice skates already. We, we saw it come up. We, we applied for it. We got it. So, open skate at McMoran. So, it's more of a community. We, we haven't done that in some years, my understanding was, so we got a grant for ice skate. So, I mean, there's things that come up that we can cross over to, grant, you know, with grants and monies as well. So, um, you know, as Councilman Harris said a couple times, you know, there is still a lot of things to figure out, but I think um, we can do that. We just, we need to work together, We need, but we're very excited about the opportunity to, to try to make that work. So, um, I know that with, like I said, I've had a lot of people come up to us and say all the wonderful things that they can help us with, and I think it's just going to make it more and better. So, one of the things that's important as well is, uh, you know, the scope and size of Rock on the River. That has three, three to five thousand people a week. Um, it's large entertainment venue, and so this is not something we don't have experience at. Nancy's team is very well versed in, in pulling off large events. And those types of programming can be done in the winter. She mentioned the food and beverage um, manager at McMoran. We also have Rock in the River, which is a large food and beverage operations that we'll be able to pull that cross-functional team over with. Uh, you know, right now, it, it seems if you look at how we operate every single component unit in the city and then how we operate McMoran, it's kind of silly. If they need an electrician in the streets or at the MOC, we have an electrician on staff we can send. However, McMoran has to contract them out. If we need an engineer, we have engineers on staff, but McMoran has to contract them out. So this will really take our in-place current cross-functional team and weave it into the McMoran operations, which I think will create a lot of efficiencies to make sure in the day-to-day -day operation it's just run much better. Turning over to the current SMG staff, uh, who used to be former McMoran employees, and this was kind of the, the setting of the timeline you know, why are we bringing this to you the second meeting in May? It's because we are on a timeline because our agreement with SMG ends May 31st. And those employees will be without a job if we don't have something in place come June 1st. And so I want to ensure that those McMoran employees who have dedicated many years of service to McMoran, who have done a fine job for SMG throughout the transition, I don't want them to go without a paycheck. And if there's a lapse between SMG and any new operational model, those people go with, will go without a paycheck. And so tonight, if this agreement is approved, our HR director will send all the McMoran employees a letter with a City of Port Huron job application. And they will need to go through the application process, through the screening process, uh, to become uh, a City employee once again. And they will be considered a new hire. Um, but we need to get that in place because it takes about two or three weeks to get that, that process done. And we will give the McMoran employees preferential treatment um, to the job openings that we have there. It's assumed that we will, we will take the bulk share of that staff. Um, so that is how the staff will be held. Um, the day-to-day -day accounts payable receivable, we'll create a ticket number and a job number like we do for other departments. 
So for labor cost, for billing, uh, that will all be run through our finance department, which once you have the system and process already set up, which we do, it's very nominal to throw on a smaller operation like McMorrin. So we are here for any questions you may have, uh, so shoot away. Is anyone on call? Yeah, go ahead, Councilman Nancy, please. because this becomes an uh, extension of the city rec department, is that, we've had such great success with grant, uh, does that help us by having it under that title rather than just a... Yeah, because not only is it now, I guess it's always been part of the city, but now, you know, we can apply for different things through the rec grants because now it's part of the rec department. So, you know, you get like the National Parks and Rec, we get grants through Michigan Parks and Rec. There's different ways now that, yes, I think, Open you know, doors. no promises, but, you know, sure. it's always about what matches up. We've already seen a couple come through that might be possibilities, but yes, I do think it will help grant opportunities. And okay. just because, too, sometimes not all people are, you know, they might not know the grants that are out there either that are in the rec side. So our staff is very used to looking for those as well. So good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have questions? Yes, Councilmember Harris. I I just like to comment. You know, for the last I don't know how many years, but more, most recently, about twice a month, uh, 7:30 on usually on Wednesday mornings, we have make more meetings and and. Uh, I just think the things that are happening in McMoran right now are probably the most positive things that we've seen in a long time. Uh, the budget that was submitted looks realistic. I know it's going to probably be a, a lot different when we get done with it than what we start with, but uh, the budget for the debt first year looks realistic. I think the group of people we got working there, from Ed to the, the other authority members, I think we got people that are going to be looking at the, at the financials for the city of Port Huron, and I think going forward it's, it's very important. And I think we're going to have a lot of success. So, my blessings. Councilmember Ashford, I think you will. Yeah, um, just a point of clarification. Who hires the manager for McMoran? Is it the city or is it the, the board? It will be Nancy Windsor's choice. Oh, okay. Um, and then also, um, you know, I, gotta, I have a huge concern. Um, I don't think in my mind we, I was looking for an extension to the recreation department. I was looking for like a Cobo Hall as to a Detroit a event planner and revenue streams coming in. And you seem to be taking it from somewhere else to over here. Now I can live with that because SM&G was supposed to be all that and some change. And they fail miserably. So the, the part I'm seeing here now is that when you and you are, you're, you're dropping down to this level. So I don't, I really don't even think it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's not even apples to apples. It's, it's just, and when we asked for a proposal, I asked for a proposal, I wanted to know what that would look like. I know this is a program guide for, for parks and recreation. I was looking for something that is really going to service the citizens of Port Huron and the surrounding areas that would draw to that. And, I didn't really hear that tonight. Well, well let me address that because I think your concerns are incredibly valid. And I think you were right so. when you mentioned that SMG has kind of failed on what the expectations were. Right. And so I think it's important to go back to the complete facility study that was done several years ago, which you guys have seen packets of it. There was two key components of it. In addition to the facilities change at the pavilion, one of the major components of the study stated that due to geographic uh, positioning of McMorrin close to McComb and Oakland County, it is difficult to get those national touring uh, shows in. And if anything, SMG has demonstrated, that was probably pretty accurate. What it also went on to say is that indigenous homegrown programming uh, will be much more effective at McMorrin. And we see those successes in Marine City at their theaters. We see those successes in Lexington at the Lexington Theater. Those events and promotions that are created from within for specifically geared towards those facilities. And that's why we believe that, I think SMG demonstrated that that chasing national tours and, and Disney on ice and stuff like that, those successes are few and far between. But those created indigenous homegrown events are much more successful. And the reason why I believe that Parks and Recreation so strongly fits into this model is because of the success we've had with homegrown programming like Rock on the River and Chili Fest when Nancy ran it was great. So we have experience in creating that, those programs and those events specifically for our community 
And that's what we found to be successful so far with our Parks and Recreation program, which I believe the study says will be successful at McMorrin. So we can create our own events, bring in the talent, um, instead of just waiting around chasing, you know, I call them chasing unicorns, uh, you know, holding out. So you're, you're absolutely right. I don't, I, I wouldn't say, what I would say is I, I don't think this is, you know, right now we're, we're, we're sitting here waiting for some national acts to come in when we could be rising up and creating our own events at McMorrin. And, you know, since this has essentially come out, since, we, you know, this proposal has come out publicly, Nancy and I have been overwhelmed with positive response about this is going to be great. Nancy does a great programming um, to bring those events in, to create those events, and to make McMorrin what it really could be. And this also puts it back under local control okay. and gives local voices. And I think that's important to McMorrin mm -hmm. programming. Well, you said national uh, and Disney. I didn't say national and Disney. I was really talking about the aspect of the, of the talent uh, through uh, the skill sets of an event planner. It doesn't matter, you know, if they do locally or nationally. So I'm not limited to that. I'm just talking about the effectiveness of it. And when you go out to set a, 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 set a course like this, you want to make sure that you're doing the, the top, the very best job you can do the great, to get its greatest impact. And I'm just saying that I just have an issue where, where it may go, but I'm willing to give it a try because SMG, SMG did fail. Absolutely. So if they could do it, but, I, but hopefully I'm still sitting here because if it don't go, we can just get rid of it, just like we did SMG. Well, now you're scaring me. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I don't no, want to scare kidding. you, but I just want you to no, know, know the truth. You no, know, I know. that's the truth but because I, I don't, I don't, Yeah, you know, I would like to just kind of. I don't think this is, is good. Yeah. Because when you present something, you make a business case. And, and to me, you haven't really made the case tonight, at least not for me as a, as a council member, responsibility for the city of Port Huron and what we had to go through with Mac Morin, yeah. you know. Um, so. If I can just comment just real quickly. Um, it, it's very difficult. Like this, we really just got the project like a couple days, I mean, a couple minutes ago. And, and we've looked, and I've been working on things behind the scenes, but it's very difficult. It's not like it's my project yet. I, right? I mean, we're, we're the finalists today. But in my mind, this, this is what we need to do. Right now, when you think of entertainment things, do you think to yourself, what's going on at McMorn tonight? Because I don't. So, and I don't, and I know a lot of people, and a lot of them right now don't wake up on a Saturday morning and say, man, I wonder what's going on in Port Huron. I think I'm going to go to McMorn. What we need to do is, it's kind of like a business, right? That's how I look at it. You start out with a business small, and you grow it. You can't go from here to zero. You, you just can't. We don't have the monies to do that. I wish we did. I mean, to make, to make money, you got to have money. So we start here. We get people going back to McMorn, like James says, with a lot of our home. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to do some bigger things. We got to get sponsorship because we don't have the money to do that at that at this point. I mean, believe me. I hope you know that anything that our department does, we'll give it 110 percent. That is one thing that I can promise you, and I can promise you that our people are very excited. And I can promise you that I feel like already we have a lot of community support. But we haven't. We once we get a chance to get in there and see what the operation is, we'll have a little better idea of the things we can do. So, is there anyone else who? Because Maybe I just. Very quick, just another yep. comment. And the kind of, I'm hopeful, and I think that the door is wide open for you to be successful. And you've already done that with the uh, concerts on the, the music programs in the summertime on the river and such. And in two recent instances, one was that last championship game of the hockey that they had, and it was really neat to see McMoran back at its old place with almost 2,000 people in there. And then there was a, a sheriff's deputies put on, excuse me, a local police department mm -hmm. our organization put on a concert. And there must have been the whole bottom level, plus some up in the balcony on a, on a small scale with kind of a lesser known act. But there were at least, I'm guessing, 800, 900 people there for a concert, a music program they put on. And that's the kind of thing you can do. And there could be someone saying at least 600 people or something like that say, hey, that's going on in Port Huron. It was enough of a draw that there were people there it wasn't just a strictly donation, it was for the musical act. I think there's potential, and I think you can do that. And then all the other traditional programs we have there, it, I think it can be a spot. And you even cited just having um, skating back at McMorrin, which we haven't done in a long time. That's an extension of what you can do and make it a community thing. That's just not poor here on there, as we're thinking nowadays, the county in general. So I think 
I think this is a good move, and I, I understand Anita's apprehensions, but uh, because we've gone through a couple of organizations now who we thought were just going to come in and just, boy, just turn it upside down. I think you will. So. Thank you. I was just going to add to that, if, um, you know, that I'm excited. I think that you'll do a good job, too. I think that it's hard to, I agree with you, you have not actually had the job yet. You've talked about having it, but now it's up to us tonight to decide whether or not that goes forward. And once you do, then you'll have the opportunity to really step into it. It's hard to lay out what you want to do when you really don't have the authority at this point to do it. I, and I uh, certainly hope that, that we do extend ourselves beyond just local local activities, not that that's not important because it is, and, I, and you have to grow it someplace. I agree with your philosophy. But we do have to look for what we can do beyond that, too, in, in agreement with what uh, Council Member Ashford is saying as far as making it a, a center that's we can entice people too from out of the community, out of the area as well for events. So, but I know it's going to take time, and I know that you uh, will put your heart and soul into it. That I have no doubt about. So, Madam Mayor, if I could, <clears throat> real quickly uh, in closing, um, you know this, the skate grant she mentioned. That's three three hundred pairs of skates you got. Mm -hmm. Three hundred pairs of skates. You know I've never gone to open skate because I don't own skates. And so think of how many people who don't own skates can now learn to skate and try skating out. So I think it's incredibly exciting. I want to say this in closing. Um, since we've announced this, there has been a groundswell of community support, both written and verbal to me, to Nancy, I know to many of you um, about, and even Ken mentioned it, um, excuse me, Councilman Harris mentioned it, how many people are excited about the direction McMoran's going, the potential this has. And, and what it comes down to is a testament to the leadership skills of Nancy Windsor and the amazing job she has done at Parks and Recreation. Um, she has the confidence of our sponsors, of our donors, and of our community because of the team that she has put together. And, and Nancy does an incredible job. And I get to see from my window when they set up for Rock in the River the, the team of programmers and recreationers, all the summer workers who come together who make that Parks and Recreation program. And so I think the ability to, to deploy a program like this with such community support is at the end of the day a testament to Nancy's strong leadership and I, I'm very blessed to have her part of our team and I just wanted to thank you Nancy publicly for the amazing work you've done and your team have done to, uh, to make Parks and Recreation such a viable program that people are willing to give something like this a shot. I agree. Is there any other comments or discussion? Okay, thank you very much. We'll take the vote. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Lewandowski? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Councilmember Amos? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item three. Is approving the purchase and development agreement with Stephen Industries Incorporated to purchase city owned property commonly referred to as a former YMCA property and several surrounding parcels for $955,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Harris? Uh, we have Mr. Alan Stevens in the audience. Uh, if you'd like to come forward to the podium, we'd love to hear what you plan for the property. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, we are very excited about this property. Uh, I should say I grew up in Port Huron. I lived on, fortunate enough to live on the river down near South Park uh, when I was growing up. And the river is fantastic here. The Blue Water area, as you know, is really a beautiful area. We think there's, we'd like to bring a new level of housing to Port Huron, something that doesn't exist today. And our proposal is to build on this site multi-story uh, buildings that uh, will be condominiums, that uh, will have services, and pretty much aimed perhaps at people who are uh, empty nesters or people who are tired of mowing grass and like a place with services and where they can live and have the view. The view uh, is uh, the major thing and we uh, want to uh, promote that. We're in the process now of uh, refining uh, designs. We don't have a, a design finished at this point and subject to uh, your approval tonight we will move forward uh, promptly with uh, design and also with marketing. We want to get out in the community, talk to people, see what uh, the need is there. We know it's there, but uh, you know we want to try to find out how many uh, people are interested in 
two bedroom units or one bedroom units or three bedroom units and uh, this kind of and some of the amenities that we're proposing. So we're uh, very excited. We're ready to move forward. Uh, we hope we can uh, get this done so we'd be in a position to uh, start building uh, towards the end of the year or at the latest uh, early next spring. Uh, that's our goal and uh, I think um, I'm confident that we can accomplish that, get something going here. I looked across the river tonight and you can see uh, many examples uh, across the river of a uh, similar thing that, that we're speaking about for this site. It's going to bring people downtown. Uh, I think it's going to do a lot for uh, the downtown development in particular. So that's what we're about. Um, we're very excited about it. We're ready to go. Um, we're not asking for any uh, terms or anything like that. We, we're prepared to write a check and buy the property and get moving. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, any Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Stevens? Madam Mayor, I just point out that in the agreement it is a three-take option. The first option being, I believe, $550,000, um, which we purchased right away. There are clawback measures similar to the Water Street Hotel project that if the development does not go forward, we can claw that back, and there's about a $75,000 penalty. So there's some teeth into this agreement to make sure that the development happens. Um, and uh, Mr. Stevens has been very great working with you, putting this together. And uh, it is amazing how many people know you and have a story about growing up with you in this town. So <laughs> we, we thank you for your interest. It's I hope great. the stories are good. They're very good. <laughs> very, very good. I, just, I just received a voicemail today from a lady who remembered you from the marina. So uh, yeah, so they uh, welcome home. Um, and thank, thank you for being a, a great equitable partner in negotiating this. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming tonight and introducing yourself. I, I know you're not from living right here, so that's nice that you took the time to come. Thank yeah. you. Mayor Ralph, and yes. I'm excited because you're excited, and I'm excited for all of us here at Port Huron. <laughs> so it will keep, keep people from looking out towards, you know, Fort Grass. There's nothing wrong with Fort Grass. But, you know, we need something here as to what you're uh, trying, your vision is taking us, you know, with right. the two-bedroom and As you can see from your building nesters. here, you have great views here. And, oh, yeah. And, and, we think it's a great site. Yeah, but I wish you the very best, and all we can do is, it's just the sky is limited. Just build it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Uh, just a noteworthy, um, like previous developers who had an option. This is actually a purchase agreement. This property will be selling with the closing date. Um, shortly after we finish the construction uh, on Glenwood and removing Fort Street, that's when closing will take place. Um, but for the community at large, this is not something that may happen. This is something that is going to happen and will happen. Thank you. We will take the vote. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Lewandowski? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Councilmember Amos? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That concludes our, no it doesn't, resolution four. <laughs> I was ready to move on. <laughs> is approving the agreement with the National Recreation and Park Association for a $10,000 grant to support out of school time programs for children during the summer months as part of a partnership with the Port Huron Area School District. Is there a motion? So move. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Support. Councilmember Amos, is there discussion? Mayor Rep. Councilmember Lewandowski. I'm just curious how many students take part in this program. I think Nancy Windsor would have an answer to that. Um, Mayor, City Council, um, oh, Lewandowski, sorry. Um, we, each area, like this covers seven different playgrounds throughout the city. And at each playground program, we have between like 30 and 50 kids. But I will say over the course of last year, we gave away over $15,000 15, lunches to kids in our city, lunches and breakfast. And this, this program talks about nutrition. They do fitness activities. Um, and those 15,000 meals also are included at Palmer Park and our pool area too. So that, that's the partnership with the school district. They do the, the food part of it for us. But the $10,000 helps cover staff costs, equipment at each of the playground sites, and um, also for like food sampling and demonstrations to show kids how to eat healthier. So. Thank you. 
I just I just wanted to make a comment because every year I get the opportunity to visit these parks and um, the work that Nancy does with this particular program and is really igniting something in the community with other community organizations uh, such as the NAACP, um, Port Huron Basketball Academy. So we have a lot of people who are interested about uh, the work over the summer with the young people and so that's really great and shows great effort on your part with engaging the community in that conversation on how to really give back in that aspect. And I, I have to always give credit credits to you. My staff member Tony wrote the grant and she monitors this and so I just would like to you know give a shout out to her as well because these do take a lot of time you know once you get the grant you're all like woo excited but then it does take a lot of time to monitor everything that goes into it so I just want to clarify that but thank you yeah we've had a lot of kids and we've had an interest at Knox Park this year so we're going to expand there as well so excited about it very good yes yeah. council member Ashford yeah uh, first of all before I go any further I think you do do an excellent job with what you have done you certainly have demonstrated beyond anything that that leadership uh, capability is there and my question is is there a match to this grant no okay no. thank you you're welcome thank, thank you, you. Rep. thank you anybody else before she sits down just, I think, just, oh, I think, well. just just one comment you know probably the last 15 years the last probably the prior 10 I seen very little activity at the Harrison school and stuff because it just kind of moved away from the neighborhood school and with it the the kids went the summer programs went and things like that and I'll tell you the last summer the activity at the Harrison playground and stuff was just phenomenal the best the best run group I've seen that Kids working with kids. It was it was it was impressive, and I just yeah, think it's a great program. And I have to just give a shout out too, because that's the program we work with the police department and community development as well. They helped identify some areas where they thought some more programming needed to be done, and they come out and help us. And that's been a huge success too, because the kids absolutely love it. That was so. the best. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the vote. Councilmember Lewandowski. Yes. Councilmember Ruiz. Yes. Councilmember Amos? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Mayor Rupp? Yes. That concludes our agenda. <laughs> there are a couple of announcements. The special meeting will be held to discuss the budget tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. in conference room 408. The city's beautification commission is in need of volunteers to assist with preparing various flower beds for the season. On, they're starting this Saturday, May 14th. And if you're interested, please meet in front of the courthouse at 9 a.m. The public safety, which was mentioned before, but the public safety and civilian awards and recognition ceremony will be held Tuesday, May 17th in the public meeting room of this building at 6 p.m. Uh, one other thing going on is uh, Lakeside Beach, the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Splash Park is going to be uh, May 19th at the beach at 4 p.m. And as well, I guess I would just say to uh, Mr. Freed, I think I noticed that the LED lights are being put up in the street. So if you wanted to say something about that, that's very exciting. Yep. Um, the uh, DT has begun the process of changing out all 2,293 street lights throughout the city. Um, they, so they'll be making their way through. And uh, they, I talked to the installers today, and they said it's taking them 10 or 15 minutes of light. They just yank out the head, put a new head on. And while I was out there, they had like four changed out. Okay. So at first I thought 2,000, 2,200 were pretty, <laughs> I thought their plan was a little bit unrealistic. But after watching them for a while, I'm starting to believe that with uh, almost five different crews out there that this will actually get done. So they'll be making them the way out. So we'll see improved lighting in our neighborhoods. Um, and it will produce, like I said before, a savings of about $303,000 a year. Appreciate Lenny taking the lead. He put that project together with DTE. And uh, it's a huge return on investment within about two years. Um, and help with some green energy in this community and make sure we're leaving a better world for our kids. Thank yeah. you. Remember, Anyone else? Yes, Council yeah. Member Ashford. I'd just like to also, uh, in a long conversation, I know that this kind of been on your, your docket for some time as a city council, and I wasn't even sitting here, you know, when it came, uh, when this, the uh, thing came about to change the lights and everything. You know, it was the Brian Muller group and all of you guys that were here before. So I'd like to commend all of you you know, from making that uh, opportunity possible for Lenny to take the ball, the baton, and make it come to life, <coughs> and James, for your leadership, uh, the, to back it up. Because I know often people always want to say, you know, who get credit here, who get credit there, whatever, but you have to start where it really started at, you know, with this council doing that, and with you passing the ball, working together as a team, 
and through James, you know, insight. So it, it's a good thing for us, you know, to save money. And uh, I can't speak on behalf of the DTE because I'm an a employee there, but it, it, was a, it was a good thing that all of you have done, and we certainly appreciate it. I'll, I'll speak on behalf of DTE, who threw in $126,000 of incentive money uh, to help make this happen. So we, we appreciate DTE's contribution of $126,000. There you go. All right. Yeah. Rep, yes, Councilmember Ruiz. Asking, uh, uh, City Manager, do we start, do we prioritize, make sure that Griswold was being lit first? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I will tell you, Oak Street. Is that where you live, uh, yeah. though, Griswold? Well, he, suffered, he suffered enough yeah. years oh, with Gr that. Griswold is in, in phase one, and Oak Street is going through not only new LED lighting, but they are going through an additional all-new cabling underground, because the issues on, on Oak is specific to splicing in the cables. and. Oh. Changing out the LEDs is not enough for that neighborhood. They need to have reliable and safe lighting, and we have worked with DTE to put that cabling project on, so I believe this summer they will get all new underground cables along Oak Street to make sure those lights are, are reliable for those people. And so to the people on Oak Street who have emailed and called, uh, we hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Anyone else? So that means grizzled to have problems then. I'm bringing my flashlight <laughs> over there for you. <laughs> I have you in the dark. Oh, else? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>